Alrighty, today what I'm going to try to do is to find the smoking gun, not there, I'm going to try to find the smoking gun with the motor on the uh, LS9, the, the, the Corvette. So as many of you saw, the Corvette is hurt and it's back there, that's the LS9 chilling back there. I think I already scratched the car again because I backed into it, great. <laughs> but what I wanna do is, you know, a test. Um, a lot of people that saw the video saw that the back two cylinders, which would be, I don't know if that's eight and seven or eight and five or whatever, these back two, passenger side, rear two. They look really clean, like really clean. So a lot of people mentioned that some of the indications of uh, it burning water was a really clean, clean, you know, uh, piston. And I was like, okay, everything else had a little bit, well, I didn't see the other side, but these two had a little bit of carbon buildup and then the burned one was the one on this side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the intercooler bricks. And again, I don't know what intercooler bricks these are. Man, do I have to move the car? I really don't wanna move the car. Let me try to get that thing. So I technically could just put water in here and wait. But I want to do them individually just to have, have more control of the situation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this brick because this is the passenger side. And fill it up with water, static. And let's see if it leaks. If it leaks, then I don't know. Maybe that's the issue with the IAT. You know what I mean? Like I'm not saying the water caused the piston issue. But let's say if it was leaking and it lost fluid then that could have led to a really high inlet air temperature issue along with cylinder pressure, oil, just a, just a perfect storm of BS. So let me take that guy out and see if I can make it leak a little bit. So after filling it up with water, if I tilt it slightly, again, no water's coming from the top. So if I tilt it slightly, So I don't know if it's coming from the waters in the fin, but it's, <laughs> it keeps coming. Let me see this side. Yeah, that too. So, and up here. But if it's coming from, I wonder if it's coming from the fins, not 100%. Interesting. Yeah, look at that. That's from the top. So the top is still full, see? But I don't know if it's coming from the fins or what. Very interesting. So yeah, I don't know. I don't really know how to test these. I wish I could just kind of let it sit sideways and just see a leak, but without pressurizing it, I'm kind of just guessing at stuff. But again, I'm trying to find a smoking gun to see if it leaks. Okay, so now that we've determined that this brick is leaking, I can only assume this one is also leaking. Not looking to verify it, but the fact that I can still grab it right now, even after it's been soaking for a little while, and turn it. Yeah, so, okay. So that could have been the smoking gun, meaning uh, sucking out of it. That's why it smelled like coolant. A high IAT because of lack of coolant, high IAT, water, oil, E85, Sunoco 260, and a bad combustion event. And see how clean this one is as opposed to these two. So the back of the brick makes sense that it was happening down here, supercharger, whatever. So I'm gonna turn this over so that this guy's further down so we can take a better look at what's happening in there. So I haven't decided what to do yet. It's still the next day. Um, but I'm gonna turn this guy over a little bit just to get a better look at that sleeve. I sent pictures to motor builders. Alec Bledsoe helped me out. He's like, hey man, this needs a need sleeve. Let me know what you wanna do. Um, Rami Zaidan's like, ah, you know, I don't know if, it, you know, so a lot of people have chimed in and I appreciate everyone's input. But I'm gonna, you know, take a look at, at it in there because by the time I send this out, it's 15,000 bucks or 10,000 bucks. 
I'm gonna be back at square one, right? Let's say I send it out and I wanna do a rebuild. Sleeves, pistons, I'm gonna be back at square one unless I upgrade it. Okay, well, what's it cost to upgrade it? What's it cost for the machine work? What's it cost for the labor? What's it? <laughs> rabbit hole, rabbit hole, rabbit hole. So let me uh, turn this guy over and bring this guy a little further down to see what it looks like. Okay, I was able to spin it over a little bit. There's just cobs of oil in here. So I wonder if something else is hurt down the pipe because this is just full of oil, like a lot of oil, a lot of oil. Get the flashlight in there. Don't run a rag in there, you're gonna fuck up the pour. Yeah, okay, we're past that point. Okay, so this guy, oh yeah, I could feel it. It's uh, really, really charred up. Yeah, right there, it's pretty indented right there. Got a good, good size indentation. So I don't have a lot of hopes, or, and you can definitely see that right there. I don't have, I mean, look, this is a sleeve, okay? It's very obvious it's a sleeve. And I don't think it went past the sleeve. Okay, cool, but that means that this sleeve has to come out and then we sleeve it. So let's say in a perfect world, you can sleeve one. Well, okay, is the machine shop only willing to sleeve one? Is it smart to sleeve one? Is it not smarter to sleeve them all? It, you know, what, what's, you know, what's the setup time to sleeve one? So, you know, that's one of those questions you have to ask machine shops because, you know, their time is worth money and so is yours. So you have to figure out, okay, well, what am I gonna do um, in terms of like uh, sleeving and what's the cost to sleeve a block and then to get new pistons, right? Unless you find one stock piston, but again, you're there, so why not you know, put new pistons in it, whatever. So, you know, tons and tons of things have to go through your mind in terms of like, what is the next step? Well, the next step is probably gonna be that, just a lot of fact finding, a lot of talking to a lot of people. And then, you know, the, the least amount of labor is putting this back in, right? Because it belongs there. It's got all the lines, it's got the dry sump, it's got all the stuff that you need, and I have everything. A lot of people have suggested throw a 5.3 in there, stroke it over to 400 cubic inch, throw a 360 something in there, make a 380, da 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 da. I'm one of these guys that if I'm gonna do anything, I'd like to have the LS9 Mac in there because there's less work to make it work. And if I do a 5.3 or something and use another crank, well, guess what? That three plus thousand dollar clutch, it's gone. See you later. Bye bye. It's interesting they put these marks in there. I wonder why. Um, so a lot of that stuff has to be figured out. If I change motor setups, I change a crank, then I got to get a new clutch. So that's another three to 3,500 bucks that I got to factor in. That's big money guys. I don't know if you guys think I'm loaded and I appreciate if you guys think that I'm doing that well, I'm not doing that well, where I can just throw 15 grand into something and then, okay, okay. Let's say I get it all put back together, it has a cam. It's got, you know, better heads or stock heads, you know, redone. Same, let's say stock pistons or better pistons or, you know, 10 to 1 pistons. Cool. I still have to address the cooling. I still have to get a lid. I have to get a heat exchange. So again, I know it sounds like I'm being a, a whiny guy, but let's be honest. In order to get this guy to run the way I want it to run, minimum fifteen to $20,000, right? Because the motor, done. The labor is going to be all me. The machine work, the pistons, if it needs it. The IAT uh, remedy, meaning lid, heat exchanger, potentially ice tank, you know? So the IATs are over 140, 150. So there's a lot to think about with this. It's not as clear and dry as you guys think it is. There's a lot of layers. And again, I have a lot of, you know, other projects that I wanna mess with. So this, this can wait. I can afford to, the cheapest option is to wait. Just wait, see if something just falls out of the sky. Um, but again, I just wanted to verify what's going on. As you can tell the sleeve, Needs to be redone, but do people sleeve these? And if they do, do they go over a bit? Do, you know, do they get a thicker sleeve or something like that? What do they do when it comes to figuring out what you know what sleeve to go into? That's a machinist thing. And again, you got to trust the machine shop. We've all known my experiences with machine shops has not been really good. All right, I'm not going to pull the other side. I don't think it needs it um, because obviously that has to get done minimum. So I know what I'm in for in terms of money, uh, the time. But the fact that we found a slight, a slight uh, smoking gun, or maybe the smoking gun, is oh my god, yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. See, the level slightly goes down, and then the more it goes down, the more 
and more leaks. So yeah, we're definitely uh, on the right track because the intercooler brakes apparently failed. And again, I don't know what these are. I don't care who manufactures them. I'm not blaming them and I don't want any fucking money. Okay, so all you guys blaming everybody. I see you guys in the comments talking shit on LMP. They had nothing to do with this. They tuned it. The car ran a good enough, you know, made good power. When I got it back, it just, you know, didn't last that long because maybe it developed a leak along those lines and bada bing, bada boom. So I'm still tight with those guys. Um, I want to make sure you guys don't go in the comments and go stupid crazy. All right, guys, I'm going to get out of here. So I got to figure out what to do with this situation. Now I have a fucking LS in my garage out of all things. <laughs> Thanks for listening, guys. Talk to you later.